Okay, so we're going to look now at section 15.3, equilibrium expressions. And I'm going to go ahead and begin by considering a reaction which has a gas, CO2, and a solid. And that reaction is between carbon dioxide and carbon to form two carbon monoxide. And we're going to write the equilibrium expression for it. We're going to do Kc. And so Kc would be the concentration of the product. There's only one product, CO, raised to the coefficient. So that's a 2 there. Okay, And then we're going to divide that by concentration of the first reactant times concentration of the second reactant. Now, we're going to make a claim, which is that for solids and liquids, the concentration can't change. During a reaction. It doesn't change. So essentially what we'll do then is we'll roll the concentration of the solid or a liquid, this would also go for a liquid, into the constant. So we'll write it in this way. K sub C is equal to the concentration, we'll call this Kc prime, concentration of carbon monoxide squared over concentration of carbon dioxide. So if you see a solid or a liquid, don't include it in the expression for the equilibrium constant. Just do the gases or aqueous materials, okay? Concentration of the gas, concentration of aqueous, but don't include solids or liquids in the equilibrium expression, okay? That comes under the category of what we call heterogeneous equilibria. Uh, heterogeneous meaning that you have more than one state of matter during the process, one phase, more than one type of phase. Okay, so um, another thing that comes up is manipulating equilibrium expressions. So we make a little more room over here. Okay, so there are different ways we can manipulate equations. So I'm going to show you a reaction here. We'll make everything a, a gas just so that everything is in the expression. So this is nitric oxide. Two molecules of nitric oxide react with one molecule of oxygen to form two molecules of nitrogen dioxide. Okay, so let's write the equilibrium expression for that. So the expression would be, again, products over reactants. So concentration of the product, NO2, raised to its exponent, or I'm sorry, raised to its coefficient, divided by the concentration of the first reactant, NO squared, that's the coefficient too, times, not plus. So in a chemical equation, we add reactants and we add products. In equilibrium expressions, we multiply. So we're going to multiply the second reactant concentration, which is O2, okay? So that would be the equilibrium expression. Now, one thing we can do is, I mentioned this in section one, it's arbitrary which reaction is the forward and which one is the reverse. We're claiming that NO plus O2 to form 2NO2 is the forward reaction, and that 2NO2 decomposing into 2NO plus O2 is a reverse reaction, but we could write it in the opposite way. We could do it as 2NO goes to 2NO, sorry, 2NO2 goes to 2NO plus O2. And that'd be a perfectly fine way to do it. However, what we're doing is we're reversing which one is the forward reaction and which one is the reverse reaction. 
So look what happens here. Now I'm gonna call this Kc prime because it's a different equilibrium constant than the one we just drew. This now would put NO times O2 in the numerator and NO2 in the denominator. This right here is related to that one as reciprocals, right? So you recall from mathematics that the reciprocal, one over X, so if I said that X equals 10, the reciprocal of that would be one over X, which would be one over 10, which would be 0.1. So what that says is, is if you reverse a reaction, the equilibrium constant for this reverse reaction is the reciprocal of the equilibrium constant for the reaction you started off with. So for example, I'm just gonna make up a number here. If this had a value of K of, let's make it 20. Okay, since this is the reverse of this one, right? This is the reverse equation of this equation. Then Kc prime would just be the reciprocal of Kc. So it'd be one over 20, which is 0.05, okay? So if you reverse the reaction, Kc becomes Kc prime and Kc prime is one over Kc. Okay, just one over the reciprocal. So that's one way that you can manipulate equilibrium expressions. The next thing that we wanna do is we wanna look at what happens if we multiply an equation by some constant. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that same equation that we started off with, 2NO, plus O2 becomes 2NO2. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply by a half. We can multiply equations by numbers, by constants. So we can multiply by half, or we could multiply by two. I'm gonna multiply by a half. So 1 half times 2NO plus O2 goes to 2NO2. Well, what happens when you take a half times two? You get one, right? So this would give us NO. This is a one, even though we don't write anything. One half times one is a half, so this becomes a half O2. And then a half times two is one, so that's just NO2. So if I multiply the equation by half, notice that all the coefficients change by that factor, okay? The question is, what happens to Kc? I'm gonna call it Kc prime here. Well, Kc prime would be products over reactants. Now it's NO2, not NO2 squared, but NO2, divided by NO, divided by O2 to the half. Okay, so notice what has happened. The exponents have changed from a two to a one, a two to a one, and a one to a half, okay? So essentially what we've done is we've taken Kc and we've raised it to a half. What we've done is we've taken what we had initially, Kc, and we've raised it to the one half by making all of the coefficients half of what they were. Now mathematically, if I have x to the half, that's the same thing as taking the square root of x. So for this particular example, really what we've done is we've taken the square root of Kc, okay? So this leads us to a second result. And the result is if you multiply the chemical equation by a number. And of course that number could be two or three or four or a half or a third. 
if you multiply an equation, a chemical equation by a number, the equilibrium constant changes by the value you multiplied by, by that number, as an exponent. Okay, so changes by an exponent. So for example, if I have a goes to b and I change it to 2a goes to 2b, see I've multiplied this equation by 2. If this was kc, this would be kc squared. That 2 that we multiplied the equation by, we don't put it in the front. It's not here. Nope, not there. It becomes an exponent. We square the value of k. Okay, so that's the second relationship that we're concerned with. The third is what happens when we add equations. So adding equation is kind of an interesting thing too. When we add equations, we can get a resultant equation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, let's take A goes to B and then B goes to C. And I'm gonna write this as a KC and I'm gonna call this KC prime. You'll see that prime quite a bit in this sort of discussion. The prime is there just to indicate this is a different KC, not the same as the first one, it's a different one. Now, I'm gonna add the equations. Do you remember from Chem 11 how to add equations? What you do is anything that's on the reactant side gets added together, and anything that's on the product side gets added together, okay? So we would have A plus B, those would be the reactants, and then B plus C, okay? Those would be the products. Now look what happens. You have a B on both sides, so we can cancel that out. So overall, we get A goes to C, okay? Now let's take a look at what happens in terms of the equilibrium expressions. This would be concentration of B divided by concentration of A. This would be concentration of C, over concentration of B, right? Now, mathematically what happens is when you add chemical equations, you multiply the equilibrium expressions. You multiply them together. So what we would get is Kc times Kc prime. So that would be concentration of B over concentration of A times concentration of C divided by concentration of B. And look what happens, the B's cancel. And you get concentration of C over concentration of A. Which by the way, I'll call this one KC double prime, is exactly what we would get once we cancel out the intermediates in that particular reaction. C over A, right? That's exactly the same, that's the result we got right there which shows us, at least for this example, that yes, if you're gonna add the chemical equations together, you multiply each of their K values to, together, and that'll give you the K value for the new equation. So if I had reaction one and reaction two, and then I added them together, and let's say K, I'll call this K1, because it's the first reaction. Let's say it's equal to uh, 20, and let's say K2 is equal to, I don't know, five. Then when you add the two values together, the K for this one would just be K1 times K2, which would be 20 times five, which would be 100. Okay, so there's the third result. So the first issue was what happens when you reverse an equation. The second was what happens when you multiply by a constant. And the third one is what happens if you add equations together, okay? Now what we're gonna look at is the relationship between Kp and Kc. Okay, so this comes up quite a bit. What you'll see when you go through these uh, equilibrium problems 
is it is not uncommon to have um, gases in these reactions. In fact, a lot of the examples have gases. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you something. I'm going to start with the ideal gas law. You all remember that, right? If there's one law that you remember from chemistry, um, mathematical law, it's probably the ideal gas law. Pressure of a gas times the volume of the container, or the volume of the gas is equal to the number of moles of the gas times the universal gas constant times the absolute temperature. Okay, So that's the ideal gas law. Now what I'm going to show you is that if you divide both sides by V, okay, so we've got P equals N divided by V times RT, right? I divided both sides by V. That this is moles over liters. It's moles over volume. And that's the same thing as concentration. So really what we have is pressure of a gas is equal to the concentration of the gas times the gas constant, the universal gas constant, times the absolute temperature. So you have a relationship right there, okay? So now, here's what I'm gonna do. Suppose we have a reaction. I'm gonna pick the one that we've been using throughout this uh, chapter, N204. Goes to 2NO2, okay? And let's suppose that we're concerned about what K is. We're going to do KC. KC would be the concentration of NO2 squared, sorry, that should be a square bracket, over a concentration of N2O4, okay? So there's our expression for KC. I'm going to define, define something called KP. And you can imagine, what do you think P stands for if we're talking about gases? Pressure, right? It's called Kp, pressure equilibrium constant. And the way we're going to write this is it's the pre same, same form, amount of products divided by amounts of reactants. So the amount of the product, NO2, the pressure of NO2 squared. So again, that coefficient becomes an exponent. It's just we're using pressure instead of concentration, divided by pressure of N2O4. So it looks different than this one over here for Kc, but it's really the same thing, just using pressure units. Now typically pressure is different than concentration, but they are related, right? The pressure of a gas is equal to the concentration of the gas times RT. So they are related, they're directly proportional. If you double the concentration, you double the pressure of the gas, okay? So now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to substitute in the concentration times RT for each of these pressures for Kp. So this Kp, then, would be the pressure of NO2, which is the concentration of NO2, times RT. But remember, it's concentration times RT, but it's pressure squared. So I'm going to square everything. I'm going to square this one. I'm going to square this one, and I'm going to square this one, right? Then that would be divided by the pressure of N2O4, but pressure is equal to CRT. So this would be the concentration of N2O4 times RT. No squared here, right? Because there's only a 1 here. So that's fine. Now, what am I going to do? I'm going to cancel out some of those RTs. I'm going to cancel out one of the Rs and one of the Ts, and now you get concentration of NO2 squared times RT divided by concentration of N2O4. And now let's go back to our bracket notation. Concentration is done with brackets. So this would really be concentration of NO2 squared, right? There's a squared there. Divided by concentration of N2O4 times RT. Now, if you take a look, concentration of NO2 squared over concentration of N2O4, that's the same thing as Kc right there. So what's that tell us? That tells us that Kp is really equal to Kc times RT. So if I know the value of Kc and I want to find the value of, of Kp, all i got to do is multiply it by RT. Now, what's the value of R? For these types of problems, for these types of problems, R is typically 
0 0.08, I'm sorry, 0.8206 atmosphere liters per mole Kelvin. And then T is the temperature in Kelvin. Remember when you're dealing with gases, you want to have absolute temperature. So we'll use the Kelvin scale, not degrees C, right? Nor degrees C, all right? Okay, so there's a relationship between Kp and Kc. So now, how can we generalize this? If we had to go through this derivation for every reaction, it'd be really, really tedious, right? So here's what you can do. You say, wait a minute, how can we have this RT? Why isn't it RT or RT squared, R squared T squared, or R cubed, R, you know, T cubed? And it really comes down to the following. What happens, what determines the amount of RTs you have is from the ideal gas law. Every time you have a pressure, you get an RT. So if you have pressure squared, you have R squared T squared. So what happened in this example was we had pressure of NO2 squared, so we had R squared T squared, and then we had pressure of N2O4 in the denominator, so that gave us one RT, and so one of those canceled, but not both of them in the numerator, so we were left with an RT. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the general form now. This is the way you can set it up. Okay. So the idea is essentially this. If you have a gas getting converted into a gas, Remember, those coefficients, the little a and the little b, those become uh, exponents when you're doing expressions for equilibrium constants. So here's what we would say. Kp is going to be equal to Kc times Rt to the delta n, where delta n is equal to b minus a. That's exactly what happened when we were just doing the previous example. 2 and let's do it this way. N2O4 goes to 2NO2, right? So here's what happens. Kp equals Kc times Rt to the delta N. Well, what was delta N? B is 2, A is 1, 2 minus 1 is 1. So that's just Rt, Kcrt. Okay, so if you have more than one gas on either side, so for example, remember this is only for gases, you can ignore uh, solids and liquids. So you don't see this type of reaction very often. Two gases on the reactant side and two gases on the product side, but I'll show it to you anyways. So here our case, Kp would be Kc times RT to the delta N. So that would be C plus D minus A plus B, right? Products minus reactants, essentially, when you do that with the exponents, okay? So this allows you to calculate values. So if I told you for this particular reaction that KC was 100, and you wanted to find out what KP was, you would just multiply that by... 0.08206 times, well, we would need to know what the temperature is. Let's say that it's 25 degrees C. That would be 298 Kelvin. So there's your RT, and then it would be C plus D minus A plus B, right? And there you go. That's how you would calculate it. So this might be like a 4, and this might be a 2, so that would be to the second power, okay? R times T, you multiply those together, then you raise it to the exponent, and then you multiply it by KC, and there you go. Okay, so four little topics here in this section. Of course, as always, you should read through the textbook. It will show you in words as opposed to my little mini lecture here, and then you can start practicing and practicing and practicing.